Okay. Anyone want to guess what's on the agenda for today? There you go. K Rand for breakfast. Smoking. He's a good lad. Big mud pie. Okay, today we're going to be K-rending this little orange wreath. So we've got down these bifold doors, a little wall here and some little nibs. Show them there. Okay. <laughs> and we've got this little wall to do here. And up there. So not a massive job, but all the same, a little bit time consuming. Just because it doesn't matter how big the job is, you still gotta leave this stuff for about six hours in the summer to go off. If it's if it's winter time, it could be up to like you know 12, 16 hours, you know. Oh, it's gotta dry out. So anyway, come on look at this. This is the uh that's about the consistency I like to use it. Okay, you don't want it running, you don't want it as, as sort of wet as finish. Uh, in fact, I'd even say that is a little bit wet, but we'll just let this stand for a minute, so that'll probably thicken up a little bit. Usually, they recommend to knock it up again, but in fact, edit this without Kirk because I'm talking shit. I just made care and thicken it up a bit. Okay, so that's about the consistency, I like it. Sort of how you'd mix drywall adhesive, you know? You don't want it too wet because you've got to build out to the beads now. What you want to do is when you're putting this stuff on, you're coming out, you go out to the, the thickness of the bead, that's where it's going to be finished to, but you're going to scrape it back. So you, you actually need to be out past the beads, scrape it back to the beads, you see. So anyway, that's it started. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and tell you everything that's going through my mind when I'm doing this job. Well, not everything. Don't want to end up in jail, so I'll just tell you the, the bits about plastering that's coming from your mind. First off, I'm going to put this wall on. I'm going to work in bands coming down. Now, most of the time, when you've done like sand and cement renders, you'll put the top half of the wall on, and then you drop down and put the bottom half of the wall on. But with this, if this starts to dry a little bit, and then you go into it again, so if I put this top half on, it takes me longer. It takes me a little while to put a band across. It takes me a lot longer to put the top half of the wall on, so. So, what happens is, the stuff starts to dry out, and when I put the bottom half of the wall on, I've got a joint line. Now, I know this, this is a, a tiny little job, I mean, it's not like a full gable on a house, but even still, you know, it's better to use the same principles all the time. So I'll put a nice little small band across the top, another little band, and I'll just work my way down in bands. And if you notice as well, these windows profiles stick out and I've beaded round them. I've put stop beads round them just because there's certain parts where the profile doesn't meet the sill, so there'll be a little bit where the render breaks out. So I've just beaded them and the same round the doors. If there's any movement, I'm not going to get any cracks around that profile. So anyway, let's get started. Enough of me yapping, let's get cracking. What was it the king said? A little less conversation, a little more action, please. Now, I always hand apply all um, K Rend and Monocouche Render. The actual term for all of this type of render is Monocouche Render, which actually means one coat render in French, but um, it's not actually one coat because you always have to put a base coat and mesh. So <laughs> it should be, it's, it's two coats now. It should be dual coat, dual couche render, but anyway. <laughs> Let's not get into the technicalities of the flipping the sales gimmicks that they come up with. Now, to get the thickness of K-Rend as well, you do it in two passes. So I'll put a bit of a pass on and then I'll put another pass over the top of it. So that needs to firm up a little bit to be able to put another pass on to get the thickness. I'm out to work a little bit here for you guys because usually Kieran wouldn't be filming this. He'd just be passing me handboards that are loaded up. But because we're only doing a little tiddle of a wall, don't mind. See, when we're doing four hours, you probably wouldn't have a chance to see this because he wouldn't have five minutes to himself to film. He'd have to just be permanently mixing and running around like a headless chicken. 
notice Hughes Gray are getting a bit of free advertising off me here. It's, uh, it's only because they give me free clothing. Do you know? <laughs> Whenever I go in there, I always hit them for the promotional stuff. Get me free t-shirts and me free hats. In fact, all my daughters, before they all become like, you know, they all grow up and uh, as I have all fancy gear, they all have Hughes Gray 90s. I'll probably get shouted at for telling you that now, though. So, just keep that between us, all right? Where's the trial Okay, so now, that's the first band in the top. Now this can have a second pass in a minute, but what I'm gonna do is, you work it like this, I'm gonna put that band in, and I'm gonna put another little band in, and second pass that one, yeah? And then I'll put another band in, and second pass that one, and another band in, second pass that one, so you'll see, you'll see what I mean now. Now, before I put the second pass on, I'll just put another quick band in here, Always squashing it into the beads as well, pushing it, pressing it into them beads so you don't get any little air pockets in them. Pushing the stuff onto the wall, make sure it's well pushed in. Again, into the beads. Now, if you're doing big areas or you're a beginner, maybe cover the windows up. I haven't covered it because by the time I put this on, I'm going to give it a quick wipe with a cloth and it'll be clean. So, But if you're doing a massive area and the stuff's going to stay on there for a long time, potentially consider covering it all up, you know. I have to say stuff like that because you wouldn't believe the amount of people that come at me in the comments. Hey, you haven't covered the windows up, you're a cowboy. I'm like, oh, give me a break, man. I know what I'm doing. Don't. I haven't just started last week. Don't worry about the windows. <laughs> if I thought it was a problem, would have covered them. You filming me? Yeah. <laughs> Come on then. Let's put the second pass on the first band now. Catching this. What you don't want to do is leave that too long so it starts to get a skin on it. So it should still be nice and wet, but just firming up a little bit. Just so it'll take the weight of another pass. And this one, you want to try and get this so it's out in front of all your beads. When you work up to soffits and stuff or underneath sills, it's very hard to put it on thick by pulling down. So what I always tend to do, put it on the Tommy trowel, and just work it like that. You can get a quite bit of good bit of thickness on like that without it sagging off. See, this is what you'll watch out for when you're showing this case. These are the bits that you're watching out for. Jump up on the trestles so you can see. Right, I'll show you where you're looking. See here, see this, see that? It's sagging away from the wall. That's what you can't have, so. If you, if you leave them like that, when you come to scrape it, it 
it'll just fall out underneath a hole there, uh, so. Let me tell you what I really enjoyed about this job. So I'm working outside on this, um, like, orange restroke conservatory build for the, uh, the window firm I do work for. But inside, the house is being renovated, and there was another two plasters in there, Jeff and Mark, older fellas, you know, in the 60s. I tell you what, we did not have a laugh with them. They were absolutely spot on. The old boys are ace. Okay, now, can you see the clear distinction? First pass, second pass, see the line? The line I'm leaving the lines visible so I know where I need to be next. So the next thing we want to do now is put another pass in here. I'll put another pass in here, and I'll put the second pass on this. Another pass in, and a second pass. This is just a way of working down the wall without giving it a chance to, to really go off and get a skin on it, which will leave you a big, horrible, nasty junk line in the wall. A ghost line, they call it, because it's a different colour. There you go. Look at the, look at the legs on him. <laughs> I'm still hobbling round on my flipping bad knee. Hey, but it's getting better, though. So for any of you guys that follow me, my leg is starting to feel a heck of a lot better. I know it seems like I'm faffing around a lot, going over and over it, but I'm flattening it in. I'm flattening it as much as I can so I can see if there's any little hollows or misses anywhere, I can fill them out. Once you can start scraping down, if there's a hollow or a miss, there's nothing you can do to fix it. That's it. Okay, so can you see how this system's working now? You can see where the first pass is and the second pass. Again, the next band coming down is here. Now, let's just say, for instance, you were on a big, big gable, right? We're doing a, you're doing a full house, and you've got the big side wall. Ideally, one man can look after about four or five meters doing it this way. If it gets more than four or five meters for one man to hand apply it, like using this band system, then you probably. Um, you're going to start getting ghost lines. So, what you're going to think is to help you work out any men you need, if you've got the gable of a house, say, and it's 12 meters long, more work. <laughs> if you've got the gable of a house and it's like 12 meters long, you need a man every four meters. You know, I'd have three men on the scaffolding, each with their own section doing the bands, dropping down the wall, looking after their four meter, their four meter panel down the wall, you know? And then that way then, it's, it can get chaotic otherwise if you try and do it other ways. I just find this so simple and it, you get a perfect job every time. Always check underneath your windowsills. These are prone, I haven't looked yet. Prone for having little misses and holes and bits for, I don't remember the bit I showed you up there when it fell away. Always happens on the windowsill, so I always check under there, make sure it's uh, fine here because this side will only take four bags to put it on. And if you didn't know, it, it's roughly one bag per square meter of K Ren, so four bags is enough to basically get this on. Now, if it wasn't, if this was a bigger wall, you need more than one bucket because the you need the lad, you need somebody mixing for you another bucket because when that runs out, you haven't really got time to be stood waiting for five or 10 minutes whilst he mixes another one, lets it stand, knocks it up and up. You haven't got time for that, so you need you need two continuous mixing all the time. You know? But on this, it's fine, because one bucket will do us, so. One bucket will do this, one bucket will do this, and then we'll move round, and then, and then we'll move round, and we'll be all right for time. Okay, notice what I'm doing here now. Just come here. See these, these little bits here that have dropped down when I'm putting this on? If I leave these and they get a skin on them, when we scrape it off, we'll have all little white spots all along the bottom of the bead. So make sure to take all those off first. And then, when you're putting your first pass in, Bellcast beads are notorious for having air bubbles in them and gaps when you scrape off having holes. So make sure you push the stuff down so it fills out any little air pockets. 
the last thing you want to do is start scraping and uncover a little hole. You'll know if you're not in front of the bead because you can hear the trowel touch the bead. You just make sure it's filled out properly. You definitely want to make sure you're out in front. What I like to do now, once it's on, is just give it a nice little press over with the derby. Now, you don't really, it's not like when you're using sand and cement and you can rule it off and take it off and move it in, and, you know, to manipulate the stuff as such. This is more so, you're not gonna take any off. You can literally just squidge it into the wall and push it around a little bit. And I just like to get it all nice and flat and one uniform sort of texture across the surface so that when a scraper can see where he's scraping and where it doesn't. Now, this is a serrated derby. And people say that this gets rid of the air bubbles, um, but it doesn't, okay. If there's an air pocket, if there's an air pocket in the wall, come here. Buddy up, quick, 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 show. If there's an air pocket in the wall and a little bubble, my phone never stops with work. In fact, if, if you want to know how to get your phone just ringing non-stop with work, then click on the link in the description and uh, join my little group. I'll show you how to leverage social media marketing. I'll show you how to leverage Google, all sorts of different things, salesmanship techniques, ev everything. Just click on the link in the description if you want to learn how to make your phone ring non-stop and message non-stop with work. Now, going back to what we're saying, if there's an air pocket, it'll be between the base coat and the surface. It'll be, it'll be behind all this. So these little serrations will not release that air, okay? These serrated derbies don't stop you getting air pockets. So if, you, if you've got an air pocket, you just burst it with your trowel and, and trowel press over it hard with the trowel, but I'll show you that in a minute. Right, now, look, I'm glad this has happened. We've got a little air bubble here. Can you see that? Right, that. See, there's a pocket of air behind the stuff. Now, it doesn't matter if you go over that with a serrated derby, it stays there, okay? Just burst it. And let the air out. Okay, serrated barbies don't get rid of air pockets. Okay, so rendering, there's always a thing, right? I was always taught to work when you're rendering the opposite way. If you're right handed, to start at the right and work to the left. And then obviously if you're left handed, the opposite way around. So you're going you go in the opposite if the opposite way to skimming a wall. If you're gonna skim the wall and you're right handed, you start at the top left, you work to the top right. And that's because when you're skimming, the heel of the trowel, the back of the trowel, leaves a line and the toe covers it. So if you went right to left, you'd have loads of lines on your wall, okay? So that's why you go that way when you're skimming. Now, when you're rendering, they say start at the opposite side. Loads of fellas say, well, why? What's, what's the point? Now, ultimately, look, it does, you'll still do a nice job, but I'll show you the reason why. Right, I'm going to start at the right and I'll show you, I'll show you what the reason behind it is. Your first pass of stuff, watch this now. That goes on. See the stuff falls. See if you get stuff that falls off. Now, if you're working right to left, watch this now. Watch. You start there. The stuff's tying in. It's tying in. 
if I was starting that way and coming this way, every time my trowel comes off the wall, there's nothing to tie into and I'll lose a little bit. Now granted, it's not a lot, but by the time you've done, I don't know, 50 meters of K rend, then you'll have dropped maybe two or three bags on the floor. Whereas if you do it right to left, you won't. It's just about efficiency. You can still do a lovely job. You can still go the, the, the wrong way, it doesn't matter. You'll still do a nice job of it. No one's doubting your skills. You'll just drop a little bit more. That's the reason. Don't film this, kid. <laughs> Kieran said, are you ready? I'm going to start filming. Just as I've run out of stuff and I have to go back to the bucket. So you can all enjoy looking at my arms when I bend over to get the gear on. <clears throat> oh, sorry, it wasn't very funny, was it, really? You see, first pass, second pass. I've dropped down the band now, so I've put the, the second pass in and dropped down again, second pass in again. I don't want to keep going on and on and on about it, and it's not really super necessary to do it on little walls like this, but I'm just trying to show you the principles because if you're on a, like I said before, if you're on a big, big wall, then this will save you. Now, you always want to go the shortest distance as well. So this is shorter that way, than it is that way. So it makes sense to me to put my bands coming down. Okay, if this wall, say was the full length of the garden, if it was like, you know, 40 foot long or something, then it would make sense to me bands that way instead, because it's the shortest distance. But all this is, the whole thing about this is just trying to keep this wet where you're joining into. That's all you're trying to do, just keep that wet. If that starts getting a skin on it, then that's a game over. You can have white lines all over your wall. <laughs> Just get the exciting little bits. There's always a pain in the ass bit that you've got to try and get. No job. Doesn't matter how simple the thing your job is. There's always a little bit that's a pain. There we go. Oh, it's not, it's not so much hard, it's just trying to get, you know, trying to get it on thick. Well, thick, you know, down there. When you can't go that way, you can only go up and down, but... Oh, look, look, look. I only dropped a tiny little bit in all that. Mm. <laughs> Stand back a bit. Get, just, well, close on to me. Right, we, we've left it now for about six hours. The sun was on this and underneath this one render render carrier board so it pulls in quite fast. Sometimes you'll end up leaving this, you'll need to leave it for like 12 hours, 16 hours in the winter and what have you. Kieran were raising his eyebrows, 12 hours. <laughs> but anyway, this is ready now and you know it's ready because when you touch it you're not leaving any imprints in it, you know. If you leave it too long, the harder, the more you let it go off, the harder it is to scrape. So you want it just hard enough so that you can scrape it and get a nice job. But you need it where you're not leaving really any indentations in it with your finger when you poke. I'm pressing that quite hard, you know. So, eye bar. This gets things, keep the camera on me. <coughs> Sorry, the phone rings non-stop. Right, what I was saying to you was, eye bar, this is only a short one. Funny, the uh, longer one I had got damaged in the van, but nothing to do with Kieran. Absolutely nothing to do with Kieran. He wasn't even there when he packed it away, right? He wasn't even there when he packed <laughs> it away. Eye bar. Little scraper, float, nail float, whatever you want to call them. Just a little scratcher. You want to use this to get the walls nice and flat. This for awkward little areas. So. What I've got to be careful of here, I don't want this bar to touch that window frame and scratch it, so I'll bead it up next to it. I'm just paying close attention to make sure that I just stay there. So 
but this is going to take a bit of time. I'm going to go over the whole wall with this and any little awkward areas with that. Now, not only am I going to rub it that way, I'm also going to rub it that way because I want it dead flat both ways. discovered that this bead is just a millimeter or so in front of this so we're okay sure you do that use the eye bar especially underneath the fascia board because when you look down it you want your wall to be nice and flat with this so as long as that's nice and straight then For anyone that was wondering as well why we beaded up here, come, 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 come in. why we put a bead in here, come round in, come round in. See this? This this plastic trim moves. Can you see that? Can you zoom in or can you see? That's why we didn't work up to this, that's why I put beads on. Because that ultimately that that will get you know it, it'll crack. So that was why. Right, once you finish one complete area like showing this wall we've just done this now <laughs> taking all day showing you once you've done one area like that before you move on to the next side just go over sight it look everywhere look for any little miss if you've missed anywhere with that if there's any little little bit that hasn't been touched with that then you need to rub a bit more with this or if if it's a bit of a hollow then go back in with this and just make sure that you've got every last little bit scraped it's vitally important if you miss a bit, if you miss a tiny bit, when that dries out, you'll have a big white patch, you'll have a big light patch on it. So you've got to really go check it from different angles. Go and stand that side and look at it, stand over this side and look at it, because it, you'll see the misses in, in, from different angles, the way the sun shines on it, or the, well, there's no sun shining now, but does that make sense? You've got to look at it from a few different ways, just to make sure you've got, can't emphasize that enough, make sure you haven't missed a bit when you're scraping. Kieran's just wiping down, but look, this is what I meant about, see underneath the, um, the soffit, see how straight the render is underneath there? That's because you used the eye bar underneath it. He's gone now. Where have you gone, Kieran? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go and see what he's doing. Let's go and see what he's up to. Look, there's me. There he is. You cleaning windows around here, are you, mate? Yeah. That's it. Lovely. Corners nice and sharp. Kevin's on the cleaning duty. That lead clean up there. Look, this is our secret weapon. Secret weapon for cleaning lead. Get it as clean as you possibly can, and then any stubborn little stains, then we go scrub a bit of WD 40. Oh, this is where the bar comes in really handy as well. When you've got wet internals with, um, with mono. So. into the angle like that 
And then to finish the corner, just use the edge of the bar. Don't push hard, just very gently, just very gently. Run down and it'll finish the corner and scrape a bit of that as well. And then all you have to do this side, watch out for the washing line. <laughs> the pin you put that there and scrape it. Do exactly the same thing, nice and gently into the corner. Ultimately, doing internals with this is a lot easier. Trying to do internals with one of these is a bit of a nightmare. Just when you get right down into these little corners, just be really, really gentle. The last thing you want to do is clip the corner of the bead and break a chunk of stuff out. So just take your time in the corners. Ultimately, when you stand back, you want them to look perfect. You know, you don't want the corner all smashed up. And then just do it like that. Down the angle. There's a little bit, uh, yeah, up, up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Kevin's going to clean up now. Um, my favourite bit is Kevin does all the cleaning, and I just use this. All this, all this ground's getting done off here. It's all getting re-landscaped for. We still clean up a bit anyway, don't we, Key? Still clean up, don't we, mate? Even though it's late and uh, Kirk's desperate for the pint. That's it. Looks quite nice, doesn't it? I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to these guys on here. Let's have a look. Yeah, that'll do. Something like that. That's how it should look when it's done. That's how it should turn out. You okay there, mate? This is the best part about it. Now, if this ground was all stained, if this wasn't getting re-landscaped, we would have sheeted all this off, but all this ultimately is going to get dug out. So, sorry, so you can see me. Yeah, all this is going to get dug up. So it do, it's not staying. But if it was, then we would have put this screen down and we would have put these OSB boards on top and um, kept it all nice and clean. You know, if it was like a finished driveway or something. So Kieran's packing up. Fair play. He keeps the van nice and tidy. The whole point of getting this van was so that we could walk down, up and down it dead easy. But he likes it to be, you know, the floor completely covered. So I don't really care. It's him that has to go in and out, not me. Oh! What time is it? 10 to 7. I definitely need a pint. Right, before you go, don't go anywhere just yet. I mentioned earlier in the video about the phone ringing non-stop off the hook. Now, do you know, I'm one of them people, mate, I, 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 I really get into stuff. Like, at the minute, I'm really enjoying making YouTube videos and all the rest of it. But one of my passions is social media advertising and Google advertising. Now, when I talk about advertising, I don't mean paid adverts. So what I do is, the way I generate all my work is word of mouth. Um, I give the best service I possibly can. Customers love me. You know, I provide that much value that they, they're not bothered so much about what I charge. It's more that they just want me to do the job. Now, I can show you how to 
do all this for yourself. Not only that, but that, that's a little tiny bit of it. The main bit, I've literally figured out a formula to make social media work for me. So the likes of Facebook, I can show you things that you can do on Facebook that literally make it rain work. Okay, and I don't mean just going on there posting. I can do your, you know, your plastering for you. Call this number. No one's interested in them sort of posts. There's a specific type of way that you advertise on social media that generates attention. Not only that, Google, the likes of getting yourself a Google listing. So you get these companies phoning you up and say, we'll get you to number one on Google. Yeah. Don't pay them. Listen, I, I can show you how to do this for yourself. I'll, I, I can teach you how to do it and it'll be free forever. You'll, you'll know how to do it yourself forever. And it doesn't matter if you're a plasterer, a multi-trade, a builder, a joint. It does, doesn't make it. This works for anybody as long as you're in the trade. These methods work for anybody. So I'm not trying to sell you nothing. If, if, if you're interested, if you would like me to help you blow your business up, like literally make it rain work, and the more work you get, obviously, you can increase your prices. And ah, anyway, you get the gist of it. If you're interested, the link is in the description. Click the little button that says more next to the title of this video, just down here somewhere. Press more. It'll give you the description. And in the description, there's a link. Click on the link. There's no hidden surprises. If you want to jump in my little group, it costs you £30 a month, okay? I know it's a hell of a lot of money, <laughs> but I'll help you. You'll enjoy it. Guys, peace and love.